Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Audrey Marshall. Along with me today is Amy Hanna, career coach for Auburn City Schools and also for Opelika City Schools. Uh, we also have with us today Kelly Savoy from Sally May in Atlanta, Georgia. And she's here to talk with our students and parents or just to mention some things about uh, some um, resources that Sally May has. And Kelly is a 21 plus year um, veteran of, of these things that are all finances that we would be able to glean a lot of information from. Uh, she's been with uh, Sally May, I know, for 21 years from, from some things there. And currently, she's serving as the Southeast Director and Assistant uh, Region Head for Sally May in Atlanta, Georgia. And she is going to talk with us today about um, scholarship funding sources for college-bound students and their parents, and also talk with us about some of the wealth of information that is on the Sally May website um, as far as things that can help us as we're getting ready to journey to that um, post-secondary uh, voyage that we all hope to get there too. So without any further ado, we will let Miss Kelly Savoy um, talk with us at this time about um, some opportunities with Sally Mae. Great, thank you, thank you. And I apologize that it looks like my screen is not working. Um, I'm not able to project myself, but I promise you I'm waving and saying hello. <laughs> Um, thank you. Thank you for having me. And I know as all of us are preparing to go to call as all of you are preparing and looking at what is your next step. Um, it can be a little stressful. It can be a little daunting. So hopefully the information that I'm going to share with you will break it down for you, make it, make it a little easier and give you some great resources because it really is. It, it, you can make it very affordable um, to go to school, no matter what you were, um, like whatever you're looking at. So first thing I want to talk to you about is please, please, please pay attention to deadlines. And I know your counselors have stressed this to you. Pay attention to deadlines and look at the school's website that you are that you are considering. Make sure you understand what are the costs there, the direct and indirect. And what are their deadlines? Admissions deadlines are very different than financial aid deadlines. So you do want to be conscious of that and be paying attention to it. Um, the FAFSA is the first thing you want to complete. It opened October 1st. And you want to complete that as close to the October 1st opening as possible because there is some money that is given away that is provided first come first serve. So that's the first thing that you do want to do is get the FAFSA completed. In completing the FAFSA, um, you do go to studentaid.gov. It's a great resource for you. It'll allow you to complete the, the FAFSA right there. Um, and that right that will um you want to set up your fsa id first and that will open the doors in completing the fafsa first thing you are going to do is once you hit submit on the fafsa you're going to get what's called the student aid report that student aid report it's important for you to review make sure it's accurate um, because that information is first sent to you and then it's also sent to each and every school that you request it to be sent to. Um, and you can add schools, you can remove schools, but every school you ask for it to be sent to, they're gonna send that to them. You will need your social security number, your parents' social security number, your parents' date of marriage, separation, or divorce, whatever the situation is, your parents' latest federal tax returns. And when I say latest, if I'm applying for fall 2021, I'm going to use my 2019 tax returns. Okay. Um, you also need any bank statements and family investments. If a parent, if your parents are divorced, you will use the parent with whom the student lives with the most. Okay, I know that that's a common question that we get asked quite a bit there. Um, so once I hit submit, within three to five days, I'm going to get what's called the student aid report. Check it. 
uh, review it, make sure it's accurate. That same report is sent to schools. And once you're admitted to a school, that's what a school uses. They take that student aid report, match it up with your admissions, and that's how they will then send you what your financial aid offer is. Um, and so it's important that what's being sent to them is accurate. So you do want to check that. You will get that email from the Department of Education, the student aid report within three to five days. I'll tell you, my son did it and he got it even quicker than that. So five days will be the long end. If you don't have it within five days, please do check and make sure, look at your email, make sure that everything did go through. Um, so what do I, in completing the FAFSA, what does that open up for me? First, it will open up um, federal grants. So we've got the federal Pell Grant, which that is Pell Grant for 2021 academic year, that was $6,345. That, if you are eligible for that or any portion of it, is granted to you. Um, there's no first come, first serve. There's no anybody who qualifies for it, it does get it. Um, if I still have financial need after that, there are some additional grants, such as the Federal Supplemental Education Opportunity Grant. And that is one that is first come, first served. So that is one of the reasons why you want to get that FAFSA completed as close to that October 1 date. Schools do not have unlimited money for that. It can be anywhere from $100 to $4,000. And again, it is awarded first come, first serve. There are some additional grants that after the that do supplement the um the Pell Grant, you've got the Academic Competitive Grant, as well as the National Science and Mathematics Asset Access Grant. Um, and so you definitely want to make sure that, you know, completing the FAFSA is important, opens you up for um, all of these resources. Why am I stressing grants? Grants are money that does not have to be paid back. So there is no repayment required on these. So your grants should always be maximized as a first resource. It does not have to be paid back. It's what I'm gonna call free money um, because again, there's no interest on it, doesn't have to be paid back. Next thing that becomes available is we do have the federal work study. And so with that, we do have, um, there is the federal work study. Um, what this is, is these are jobs that you can be granted on campus. And the great thing about this, it does require you completing the FAFSA. These can be off campus, on campus. These will be positions through the school. And the great thing is a lot of times you can get a position within an area of interest or the professor that you really like. Um, and so it can give you a leg up on exploring a career that you have an interest in or getting some additional academic help. So these are really great positions. The other thing is these people know that your first priority is success in your classes. And so when it comes time for exams and you say, hey, I need to cut back on my hours this week, um, they, have your, they have it in your best interest and they're going to make sure that they can arrange your schedule to accommodate your success in your schools. So it's a great thing. It is the federal work study program. Hours are limited within this program. The most you can get is 20 hours by federal regulations. Most schools will even, 20 hours per week, um, most schools will even limit it to less than that. And that can be um, anywhere from six to eight hours a week. I do like to point out that this is not money that is provided upfront. So this more so will go to pay for your indirect school costs, your um, cost of living, some additional food money or transportation money, because you will gain this money as hours are worked. So it is important to understand that with federal work study, it's not, you'll be granted access to it upfront. They'll tell you on your financial aid offer if you're eligible for it, but it, you're not provided this money upfront. It's as hours are worked. So the next resource we wanna look at is scholarships. Scholarships is like grants is free money, money that does not have to be paid back. And so this should be the next resource that you look to maximize. 
And scholarships, they can be community-based. They will come from state agencies, federal agencies, um, community-based agencies. So there's a lot of different resources. They can be academic-based. They can be financial need, community, based on a skill that you have or a talent. It is not just academic. So do make sure that you are looking and maximizing these resources. When you're looking at the different schools that you're considering, look at the school's website to see what scholarships they have available, what you have to do to qualify, and if there are any additional applications. Some schools will base the application, the application is actually the FAFSA. Some schools will have their own application. So you do wanna know that and know what you need to do to be eligible for their um, scholarships. There are many different resources. Again, I mentioned local, community-based. Um, I always encourage, you know, Thanksgiving is coming up. As you're talking to your parents, your grandparents, your aunts and uncles, ask them what organizations are they members of? What, um, what about their employers? Employers do you have scholarships that are for um, the children of their employees. So you do want to look at all those. If you have a part-time job right now as a student, many of your employers will provide you with scholarships there. Um, so you do want to make sure that you're taking advantage of all of those. Um, you're, if you are affiliated with a local church, um, do, take, do take a look at that. There are also online search engines, and these are great resources because they aggregate the scholarships and all the different things that are available there. Sally May has a search engine. Our search engine has $30 billion of scholarships out there. Um, you know, you can see 6 million college scholarships. And this November is National Scholarship Awareness Month. Um, and so you'll see in front of you, we do, um, on a monthly basis, we do a, a drawing for a $1,000 scholarship. This month, anybody who registers, is your name is put in the hat for a $10,000 scholarship. But do make sure that you're maximizing the utilization of scholarships. And these search engines do a great job in making the world smaller. Sally May has one. College Board has is another one that a lot of students will utilize. College Board, there's six million six billion dollars of scholarships. So right there, I've just shared with you six thirty six billion dollars of free money, money that does not have to be paid back. Yes, some of these do require a an essay. All of them do not. Um, so do do it. Now, what's great about these search engines is basically what you do when you register, you tell this search engine all about yourself. It goes out and searches the database of 6 million scholarships, sends you back a listing of these are the scholarships that you are eligible for. Here's the link to apply and here's the due date that you need to apply by. Um, and so it makes the world a lot smaller. The other thing is, we have vetted these scholarships, so we know these are true. You're putting your information out on a reliable resource um, and these that people are gaining these scholarships. So please do take the time to maximize and utilize them. There is literally, there is a scholarship for everything. There is literally a scholarship if you like asparagus, truly. Um, so please do take the time to do that. The other thing that I do want to share with you is Alabama has a scholarship. It's called the Alabama College Count Scholarship. This You can find this at the treasury.alabama.gov forward slash college counts. This is a scholarship. There is no essay required. There, these are based on the county that you live on. My understanding is, I believe I remember that there are two per county. And in talking with the treasurer's office, there are some counties that receive no applications. So please do not let your county be one of those. Um, the application for this does open December 1st and it closes February 25th. And you can get anywhere from, uh, it is awards anywhere from 2000 to 4000, depending on whether you're going to a two or four year school. So it, it that's a good amount of money. Please do pay attention to that and um, don't hesitate. One of the requirements for this is you do have to have a minimum GPA of 2.75 and your ACT score um, has to be 26 or below. 
That's right, you heard it, or below. So you can see that there are a variety of different scholarships to um, help everybody out there. Um, that is your free money. The next thing that the FAFSA does open up for you is if I still, if I've maximized the utilization of my grants and scholarships and my work study, the next thing I wanted that I would look at is the federal loans. With the first federal loan that I would consider is my direct subsidized or unsubsidized. This will, this does require completion of the FAFSA. The difference between these loans is a subsidized loan is a need-based loan. You do have to demonstrate need. Um, and the federal government is paying for the interest while you're in school. An unsubsidized loan, um, this is, there's no financial need. So virtually almost everybody would qualify for an unsubsidized federal loan. Um, Payments are not required while I'm in school, but interest is accruing. So once I complete, interest would be would um, I would be responsible for the interest while I was in school. Interest rates on these loans, these do have to be paid back. These are loans. Interest rates start at are for this academic year are 2.75. There is a, a little 1.056 fee that is taken out before. Funds are limited on this, and what I mean by that is there is a limit each year. So your first year in school, you're eligible for a maximum of $5,500, your second year, $6,500, your third and final year, $7,500. Um, there are many different repayment methods with these, and some of them, depending on what your occupation is that you end up going into, do offer loan forgiveness. So if you have maximized your private loans and you do have to borrow, your first resource that you should look at is your direct subsidized and unsubsidized federal loan. After that, if I still have, if I still need to cover a balance, I should first look at it, talk to my school and look at their payment plan. Most schools do have a tuition payment plan that I can look to spread out my payments, whatever it is I owe from three to 10 months. It's interest free. So at the end of that semester, at the end of that academic year, I owe nothing. So that's why I always say, um, please do talk to the school. Think about your family budget. Don't put yourself in, in a situation that you're not comfortable with, um, but you do want to look at that different resource, those different resources there. Um, after I've looked at that, there is also the Federal Direct Plus loan for parents. That is a loan that is just in the parent's name. The student is not on that loan. Um, it is, I do have 10 years to pay that off. Um, the interest rate is not at, is much higher than what it is on the direct subsidized and unsubsidized loan. This year's rate is 5.3%, and it does have a fee to it that is 4.228. That fee will be taken out of the loan before I before it is sent to the school. So you do want to look at that and compare your compare other borrowing options. There are also private student loans. Um, private education student loans, they can be very competitive to the Parent PLUS loan, and they do also, majority of them offer zero fees. So this is where you want to talk to your local bank, whoever it is that you bank with. Sally May offers these, your major lenders offer them, credit unions, um, and compare your borrowing options and figure out what is best for you. Most importantly, if you are going to borrow, keep in mind how much you're borrowing, and a rule of thumb is you should never borrow more than what your first year's expected income will be. Um, so, you know, you do want to borrow wisely there. A great resource is um, Sally Mae has paying4collegeresource.com. I know you're seeing in front of you our sallymay.com website, but we also have a resource paying4collegeresource.com. 
Um, and this is a great resource because I love the videos on it. There's a wonderful video series that will walk you through completing the FAFSA scholarships, but there's also great pieces of information that has more information on the FAFSA, on scholarships and grants, financial aid offers. Once you start getting, once you've been admitted to a college, you completed your FAFSA and you start getting those financial aid offers, each one of those are going to work look a little bit different. And on this financial aid offer, there's a great resource that you can download that just really is, is very similar to an Excel spreadsheet, and it allows you to make sure that you're comparing apples to apples. Do make sure that you understand when you get that, what are the different, right, the understanding financial aid, um, I'm sorry, right there, the financial aid comparison worksheet. Um, it's just a great resource so you can make sure that you're looking at and comparing apples to apples um, because you want to make sure that you understand the difference between a loan, a grant, and a scholarship. And remember, a grant and a scholarship are money that does not have to be paid back and you should maximize the utilization of those first. Okay. Um, and with that, I hope that I've shared with you some great resources and um, helped you to understand there are a multitude of resources out there that do not have to be paid back. Um, you've got your grants from completing the FAFSA scholarships. Don't hesitate to apply for them. Apply early and often. Thank you. Okay. And Kelly, we thank you so very much for bringing that wealth of information to our parents and to our students. Um, we appreciate the time that you've shared with us today, and we want to encourage our students, um, which is one of the reasons why we're having this particular session, um, look at um, financing your college as an investment. That investment could include you doing really, really very well at school while you're here and earning scholarships. And then if not, then as Ms. Savoy was talking about, there are other options to, to try to get that free money first. And with that, um, I'm going to see if Mrs. Hannah has anything that she'd like to add, and then we'll move on from there. Sure. Um, Kelly, thank you for joining us and sharing all this great information. It's really helpful. Um, I wonder if you could tell us just real quickly, a question that students ask us often is when a student receives a scholarship or a grant, where does the money go? You know, some students think that money might go directly into their bank account. Um, can you can you touch on where the money might actually go? That's that's a great question. Thank you. Um, the money is sent directly to the school. Now there are some scholarships that might be sent to the student. But it is important, they're usually made co-payable. It is important that the financial aid office does need to know of any scholarships you have been awarded. Um, but the majority of them, um, the norm is that it will be sent directly to the school. Great, thank you. Also, um, many of our students do look at what you were talking about in, in that Sally May offers as well the aggregate scholarship sites that um, ask for a profile and go out there and search for all different types of scholarships that might fit your profile. Can you touch on just a few things that that students could watch out for, um, you know, in the way of a scam or a site that, mm -hmm. that, that just is not valid? Right. Um, absolutely. Um, first, you should never pay to fill out scholarships. Um, scholarships nor the FAFSA, you should never pay for that. Those are always free. Um, so please, if, if somebody's asking you to give your bank account information um, or, or to pay for anything, um, back out of that, do not go forward. Um, I would say with the with the you know stick with your reputable scholarship searches. I know FastWeb is one, College Board, um, and I'm sure you all have a, a work with the school. Many of schools will offer their scholarship search tools. Um, I'm trying to think of CapEx is one that has been utilized in the past through um, in, there in Alabama. 
Um, but do look at make sure that it's a reliable resource that, um, you know, again, is not asked. It should not be asking for any banking information. It will. Um, it shouldn't even ask for your social security number. I was going to say that too, Kelly. That is a red flag, definitely. Mm -hmm. And for our students, we have wonderful college and career counselor, James Tyndall, who we encourage our students to make certain that they visit his website. And he has a wealth of information there, and along with these tools that you've told us about too. And it's really great to know that these things that you have on there are vetted uh, prior mm -hmm. to them being placed out there for sure. Uh, and any questions or comments from anyone? Okay. Well, once again, we do so appreciate you spending the, this time with us today. And, um, and also thank you for sharing the resources. We did um, have um, D1 that we did have over here too, as far as uh, offering that as a session, we will have him out there on our um, YouTube channel, but we do want to thank you again and um, we will sign off for the recording and you all have a good afternoon. Thank you. All right. Thank you.